and I'll be making again a different video about 20 minutes long or so uh, for every class that will comprise the let's say the second half of the of every class so we're going to start every class with a kind of question and answer where you should be prepared to uh, ask a question based off of previous content again it doesn't really matter if it's chapter one or chapter two whatever it is or chapter three or chapter four but come to class prepared to ask a question okay so with that being said so welcome to class 13. is something called Bayes' theorem. And the, the real secret here is using a, I'm going to show you guys how to use a probability matrix, it's usually the best word I find, use a probability matrix or a table. And we looked a little bit at that in the last video. to solve complicated probability situations. In other words, the Bayes theorem says that, you know, let's say we know that 0.2% um, of Super Bowl games are won by more than 10 points. Um, but then you can go on and you can say, 80% uh, of those games have a controversial uh, ruling on the field in the last 10 minutes or something like that. So there's a, there's a second factor that comes in to complicate things. So this is where I wanted to start and stop for this video is how do you handle this thing? So let's say you don't have the table. You just got something confusing like this. So again, it could be Super Bowls where the coin toss is disputed or whatever it is, but you got something and then there's there's a complicating factor. So assume cancer has a 1% prevalence rate. Uh, in other words, 1% of the population has cancer. I don't know how they figure that out, but let's say that's true. Denoting the event of having cancer by C, we know the probability of cancer Right, okay, so that shouldn't be too bad. This is a simple event right here, right? Either you have cancer or you don't have cancer. Now, here's the problem, is that uh, there's a false positive. This is the complication right here. You introduce the complication. And again, we've already kind of seen this in the last, in the last example, but we were given a table. But how, how, what if you have to build the table yourself? That's where, it, again, the added complication is, is we don't have the table yet, so or the matrix, so we have to build the matrix. That sounds a lot cooler than it probably is, right? You have to build the matrix, and here's how you do that. Again, they kind of go through it here, but I find it confusing, so this is why I wanted to, to take some time today to go over it with you. So this is my probability matrix, and it's always going to look like a tic-tac-toe board when you first build it. And again, it's kind of like you, you could, basically one variable is going to be here. So what do we know? Well, we know that we're talking about cancer, right? So do you have cancer or do you not have cancer? Now, what we're talking about here is there's a test, right? Because it makes sense that you have, if you have cancer or you don't have cancer, this is independent of a, if the test, you know, they use a test to detect cancer, but whether or not the test works has no influence on whether or not you have cancer or not. Right? We don't really think of it that way, but you know, when you go in and get a COVID test, it's the same thing. If your test comes back negative, it doesn't mean you don't have it. It just means the test came back negative. Right? There's some kind of statistical thinking for you right there. Right? It's possible for you to have the virus, but to have a negative test, which is called a false negative right as we talked about last time right so the false so there's a false negative just to kind of go through this again false negative just quickly false negative means that you your, your test is positive 
sorry, test is negative, but you have cancer. And again, I go through that in video number 12, so you can go through that and look at all the other ones, right? Test is negative, but you have cancer. Okay. And I go through a false positive, right? Uh, again, that's video 12, right? Go watch video 12. Um, now, so you have cancer or not, they, it, this has nothing to do with the test, but hopefully the test tells you if you have cancer, it's positive. And if it's negative, you get a negative score. Like hopefully the majority is over here, right? You, you have, you, sorry, you have cancer and it's positive. Hopefully the majority is here. And uh, in this row, if it's negative, you, you want this one to be bigger. Than, than this guy here, right? You'd want this to be bigger than that and this to be bigger than that. Okay, so what do we know? So we know that there's a 1% cancer rate, the false positive is 10%. That is the, so what is a false positive? False positive means you have positive, but you don't have it. So in other words, we can put those numbers in here already. I'm going to go back and erase this now. I don't need that circle in there. Um, but let's just, again, whenever we're given percentages or probabilities, let's just assume that there's a population or a sample of 100. This is going to help us out in terms of just visualizing what's happening, right? So how many people have cancer at any given time? Well, we said that uh, there's a 1% prevalence rate. So the total people out of 100 that would have cancer, right, the total people would be uh, one, right? And 99 people do not have cancer. Right? These are the totals here. All right. Uh, right, because this makes sense, right? I mean, if there's 100 people, and 1% have it, that means that all through here, uh, one people have it. Uh, and uh, 99 people don't have cancer. Now, the, the real question is, is what's going on with this stuff over here? So the false positive rate is 10%. That is the probability of a positive test given. So you can just use the, the conditional probability. The probability that you have a positive test given that you do not have cancer is 0 0.1. Now, based off of our formula sheet, right, if we go back to our formula sheets on, let's just put a new one in here. Right, if you look at your uh, probability here, conditional probability, right, this is the important one. This is the difficult one. In, in, uh, in this chapter, right? Make sure you're all over this one. If you want to get that A plus, make sure you understand how this works. Um, okay, so again, I just kind of remind myself there. So if I know this, if I know the probability of positive given that you don't have it, uh, it then I can write using that formula. I go, you don't have it is the same thing as the probability, and this is what I really am looking for here now, the probability of positive and no cancer, because that's gonna give me this, right? That's gonna give me this square here. Over the probability that you do not have cancer. We know the probability that you do not have cancer, right? The probability that you do not have cancer, because we, we can do all this here, right? We, we know that this is 0 0.1. The probability that you do not have cancer is 99. Sorry, we're sorry, this guy, yeah, false positive is 0 0.1. So here we go. Uh, we don't know this one. This is what we want to find out. What's the probability you don't have cancer? 99, right? Sorry, this is, this is, yeah, 
That means 99% don't. Right, okay, good. So let's get, what's our answer? So the probability is gonna be 0 0.1 times 0 0.99. In other words, 0 0.099. So how many people is that? Um, again, it's it's a discrete thing, so it's kind of difficult to say, uh, you know, nine point well, times a hundred. That's uh, nine point nine people, which is kind of difficult. But let's just for the sake of this, just put nine point nine anyways. I know you can't really have nine point nine people. You could just bump this up to a thousand. That's what they do. They just say, well, instead, let's use a thousand so that the numbers work out. But again, for the purposes of this table, it's fine. OK, so if 9.9 .9 have it, then you can fill in the rest of this, right? Because this column has to add up. So we're basically done now because 0.99 and then I can figure out what this is. This is. Okay, let's let's say that's correct. Um, right, I have all of this, I have all of this. I guess I have to do one more. I have to do the prop, because I'm given another thing, so I must have to use it. Uh, the, so I know the false, I use false positive, now let's do true positive. So the true positive, Right, true positive rate would be people that have can or that, that test positive given that they have cancer. So we're saying that uh, Given that the cancer is present at 0.8, okay, so there we go, 0 0.8, and we can just do the same thing we just did. So you just say uh, the probability of the probability of positive cancer equals positive this and cancer that's what we really need to fill out our table probability of cancer so we know this is 0 0.8 because they told us this is what i want to solve i know that the probability you have cancer is 0 0.01 so therefore is this is going to go down by two slots so 0 0.008 so let's times that by 100 so this is going to become uh positive and cancer. this guy becomes 0 0.8 because again I'm, I'm i guess i could have just kept it as percentages but again this kind of gives you a better idea of how many people Normally, this is how they give it to you. So I, 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 let's just keep it going like this. So if I know that's 0.8, that eight, if 0.8 people actually have cancer, that means 0 0.2 people out of one don't have it. Because again, all these need to add up. Okay. Um, Again, you, the, the numbers here are kind of confusing because they're decimals, but as they, as you'll see, they do, they just multiply everything to get up to a thousand people and then you don't have decimals, right? If instead of a sample size of a hundred, I use a sample size of a thousand, it's not really a problem. Right, let's just actually 
put that in there so that it's we can when we check our answers make sure it's the same so we have cancer no cancer positive and negative and so let's just times everything by 10 here so in other words out of a thousand people so i'm saying here if you had a thousand people eight people are not are, are going to have cancer and actually test for it as positive so a true positive uh nine d nine people are not going to have cancer but test positive for it so that, again that's a little alarming right and then this one here we would have uh, tw uh two people that have cancer that test so this is also alarming right these are kind of the bad ones right these are the false results and then finally, uh, 891 people, which is good, right? These are the good ones, right? Because you have 891 people that don't have cancer, but they get the negative result, so that's good. All right, so that is how you conduct a Bayes theorem uh, probability distribution uh, or a probability matrix table. And that's the numbers they have. Just in different areas, but it's the same numbers. OK, so they're going to go and, and do this whole thing here. I, and again, I, I didn't really like the way they did it. Um, so that's why I did it the way I like doing it. And hopefully that makes sense. You can do it their way, too. Um, if their logic makes more sense than my logic. Um, but that's what they talk about there. And this will be the subject of class number 14. When we look at the counting theories, we're not going to do four or five here. This is not going to happen. Uh, but we're going to do this on uh, class 14. So come back tomorrow for uh, the video on counting, basically uh, permutations and combinations. Okay, bye for now. See you in class. Come with questions. Bye for now.